guys, we have two awesome events coming up that we will be attending. Mustangs at Daytona, which is in Daytona Beach, Florida. Here's the schedule. I have more info down in the description. Then two weeks after that, we have Mustang Week. Definitely go check out these two events. We will have a booth at Mustangs at Daytona. You can get merch, see the cars. We're trying to get as many cars done as possible for them. And we'll see you there. Mustang Week, we will also see you there. That is two weeks after this. But let's get back to the video and hopefully we'll see you there. What is going on guys? We are back with the three valve swap new edge Mustang Turdzilla. If you guys don't know, we sold this car a while back. This car is seeing a two valve, a four valve, and now a three valve. So we wanted to do something different. And I think this is a really cool swap for people who have a blown up two valve or a tired two valve. This three valve will bolt in here with very little modification. And I wanna show you what you need to do to get this thing in here. So we got Brad. Overall, this is for the most part a direct bolt-in engine with some minor modification. I will say the header choice we chose for it was awful. Uh, they are eBay headers. Fitment was probably terrible on a two valve. And we got these adapter flanges, so it goes from a three valve to a two valve um, and you can see that in the other video but those are from logan motorsports they don't make those anymore but hopefully after this video maybe they will yeah either trying, that or uh maybe we'll come up with uh something of our own trying to find information on doing these swaps is very few very far between the engine I mean, in all actuality, it had a very short life for Ford. It was five years in the Mustang and then Coyote. Yep. And the Coyote is better than this engine in every way, uh, stock for stock. But you can pick up a three valve for fairly cheap. So, and you might be wondering, you know, how do you swap this in? Stock computer, big, uh, big thing that's really cool, really cost effective. Uh, engine harness, you stock don't engine harness. You have to really change a whole lot. Uh, you have to do either change the plugs for the injectors from EV1 to EV6, or just do what we do and do adapters. I had to move a couple plugs, but everything else is pretty much the same. We'll show the wiring. This is kind of on the level of doing a four valve swap um, in terms of the wiring extending and stuff like that. Um, now underneath the car, I did go ahead and I swapped on the two valve oil filter housing. That is a direct bolt on. I took the three valve one off because it's different. On this side, AC compressor bolts up, stock location. And for our power steering, it also bolts in stock location. But you're going to see that we're going to grind this boss down for this idler here in just a few minutes. That is so that the power steering has clearance to mount up over there. Other than that, uh, six bolt stock flywheel from a two valve bolts up. Uh, your stock transmission bolts up. Stock drive shaft, everything. I mean, this is really, really easy when it comes to a swap. This car already had a two really K member. That is not necessary. And overall, I mean, yeah. It's not, it's not hard to do, I think. The hardest thing we've had to do so far was aligning the steering shaft. We had a lot of issues trying to drop the engine into the car, car on top of the engine, and things just wouldn't line up correctly. So we pulled the entire shaft out. I guess whoever had these headers before us had a similar issue with the drive shaft being in the way, so they had actually cut out the tube and then welded in a new piece, which I think would have worked if we kept the tube out in here. Yeah, but, but we got the little adapter plates that kind of push it out a little bit, but I mean, it's there and these headers were super duper cheap, came with the mid pipe as well. So yeah, we're gonna show you the cutting off of that. We're gonna show you the up top and we'll keep going. One other thing I should mention, I did pick up this engine from Brent Speed. They just so happen to have this laying around, but uh, we did do a set of Detroit Rocker cams. Uh, these should be pretty aggressive. We also did lockouts. That's the key ingredient to putting in the two valve and using the two valve ECU. Since you delete the VCT and the cam phasers, 
you no longer have to run a three valve ECU because this will now operate just like a two valve because the cams are fixed and the cam position sensor right on the passenger side. You use that and you use the crankshaft position sensor. Everything works like normal. We don't even know if this power steering is uh, good. Hopefully it is. This is from Turdzilla's original power steering setup. As Brad gets dumped in power steering fluid here. Yep. yep. So, we will update you guys when we start grinding. We're just gonna cut that right off with the cutting wheel. That way that clears. All right, so Brad is just gonna go ahead and knock this boss right out. So that way the power steering pump can go ahead and mount right there. I told you, smoking, right? Harbor Freight, baby! She's toast, dude. I think it's about to catch on fire. That's sad. It's worked great for me for the last like. Two I would. Weeks. That's why when I you grabbed it, I was like, "You're using that?" Well, okay, go get the Milwaukee, dude. Where to find it? You can't find the Milwaukee. I put it away. That's probably why I can't find it. Yeah. Sub in the Milwaukee. about right. FYI, make sure your engine is uh, sealed up. Don't want any metal shavings. Probably blow this out. Alright, we might be getting ahead of ourselves, but uh, I kind of want to start it, hear what it sounds like. It's going to be no map, no accessories, uh, open header, O2 sensors hooked up, but I think it should fire up. Uh, with no map, it reverts to a known good table. So, I'm interested to see if it'll fire. Nothing yet. Then, we'll button up uh, a bunch of other things. Okay, EV1, EV6 adapters. Uh, you can see, we got camshaft position sensor. That one's extended. Uh, we went ahead and routed coolant temp to cylinder head temp. We're gonna see if this uh, gives us a good enough uh, coolant temp reading. TPS is out, that needs to be extended. Uh, what else did you got uh, here? This guy here, fuel pressure. Fuel pressure, that needs to come over on this side. Supposedly, the stock fuel feed line will stretch around and perfectly 90 and go into the rail. I have yet to see if that's accurate, but we will confirm here pretty soon. All right, so we chose to go with the Ford Racing Manifold. Not completely necessary, but you would need to do charge motion delete plates if you were using any stock intake manifold. Happened to find this up on Facebook for a pretty good deal, so that's what we went with. We are using the Cobra style. This is actually a Navigator throttle body, but the same thing. Drive by cable instead of drive by wire. We had to just drill out uh, the bolts. I ended up doing... Um like a half inch drill bit that gave me enough room to play around with the bolts to get them to line up where they needed to and get the holes to line up. Yep. Otherwise, you'll have to use a uh, spacer plate. Yep. Which, an advantage of the spacer plate, if you design it right, you can make some sort of throttle cable bracket, which might not even work on the sport racing manifold. We're definitely going to have to get creative with that. Ready? Okay, we're wired. We're vacuum plumbed. No math, no accessories. Whatever tune is in here, which should be the four valve tune that I did with this thing a long time ago. 
Let's see what happens. We don't know if the fuel pump is working. I guess we'll find out. Got some chop. Yeah. Open header, literally the minimum. Plugged in. That's a success. Remote IAC. We're gonna basically button everything up now, but we know it runs. So we got get the pigtail for the 08 GT, but we got that. Working. That's so ghetto. It works though. Yeah, that the wiring is there. All we gotta do is put the pigtail on. Camshaft position sensor right here. Obviously put a belt on it, but we didn't wanna we just wanted to simplify this. Super freaking simple. Get it running. And uh, we'll come back in the next video kind of just bundling everything up, but uh, that was that was not a long crank. I really didn't I was like, no, oh that... I heard a stumble and it we... just boom. We've had coyotes crank a lot longer than yeah. that one did. Maybe it's because we actually primed the fuel system. Yeah. Hit the like button, comment down below. Let us know if uh, you're interested in the swap. We might actually make some of these parts that people don't make anymore. I think this is a heavily sleeped on swap. We put a four valve in this a long time ago. It made 280 wheel horsepower. That is so lame. Like Brad's car made 275 with a two valve. You guys out there probably have made as much as 300 on an NA two valve. This, we're going for anywhere between 330 and 370. The intake manifold now is uh, it's gonna help a little bit. But, uh, yep. Check this car out, Mustangs of Daytona. We're bringing it. We don't know if it's gonna drive there. More than likely trailer, just because there's a lot of different things. This car sat for a really long time. But uh, I think that's a good success. We'll see you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.